purpose of the marker, as I said, is to educate our community about our city's rich history. On this spot, back in 1851, the citizens of Syracuse rallied to protect the fugitive slave William Jerry Henry from being sent back to the South into a life of slavery. On the one year anniversary, thousands of local people gathered for a rally to protest against slavery and the fugitive state law, and a very courageous act and one that we are all so proud of. This project is a great example of collaboration between the public, private, nonprofit, and community groups working together to make visible and viable improvements to our city. I want to personally acknowledge the Onondaga Historical Association, the William Pomeroy Foundation, and we'll hear from Mr. Pomeroy, the City of Syracuse Department of Public Works, the IDA, 40 Below, and the Friends of the Light Art Park, which is where we are right now, guys, for their hard work and dedication to help preserve the integrity of the park, both as a vital cultural and recreational resource in our community. There's all sorts of things all around us, and we're going to be working with you and with the community to try to, try to show more of these uh, th kinds of things to the community so that we can all really come to enjoy our heritage. And I'm certainly happy to be here uh, to dedicate the historic marker and recognize all these historic events that happened here in 1852. Uh, first, we celebrate the building of a large railroad roundhouse and machine shops. And kids, this, this, this roundhouse is just to the south of us, in this direction rather, to the east. The, uh, the need for these buildings grew out of the success of Syracuse as a transportation hub uh, with the railroad and the Erie Canal. And secondly, we celebrate John Wilkinson, the president of the Syracuse and Utica Railroad. We'll be hearing from him in just a moment. When a location was needed for the first Jerry Rescue celebration in 1852, Mr. Wilkinson offered the new roundhouse. The celebration took place on October 1st. I presume that perhaps the weather wasn't so good. They wanted to be indoors, and he offered up the roundhouse as a place. And as the sign says, there were 5,000 people from the community that came to that. It featured speakers like Frederick Douglass, William Lloyd Garrison, Garrett Smith, and Lucretia Mott. Well, remember, the people of Syracuse were going to be taught a lesson. And it was decided that William Henry, this escaped slave, was going to be arrested to show the people of Syracuse they could not go against the federal government. So the sheriffs came to the place that he worked. They handcuffed him. They said that he was being arrested because of a robbery charge. Now, William Henry was not worried because he could prove where he was when this charge was made. But he was taken in front of Commissioner Sabine, and then the real reason for his arrest was said, that he was being arrested for being an escaped slave. Now, the people of Syracuse had heard about this, and they all gathered on Clinton Street in front of the courthouse, uh, on the bridge over the canal, and they were all waiting to see what was going to happen. Uh, I was there sitting on one side of uh, William Henry. Garrett Smith, another abolitionist, was on the other side. And William Henry decided to try to escape. And he bolted up and ran out of the courtroom. The people behind him kept the sheriffs from following him. He made it outside, but he tripped and fell. And this was a second story door to the courthouse. And he fell down all these stairs. As he ran, people would part, just like the waves. And he would go through, and then they would come back. Now, abolitionists wanted to celebrate at City Hall, but the city founders, the fathers, were a little uneasy about this because many of them had been involved in the rescue and were still facing federal charges. Such a demonstration would appear to be in defiance of Washington. So the proposal to hold the celebration in City Hall was denied. Well, as one to always be in the middle of things, and as uh, one who happened to own a very, very large, at the moment, empty building, the largest in the village, my roundhouse, I stepped forward to offer the facility for those festivities. And what festivities they were. Lasted all day long, and as that other gentleman remarked, more than 5,000 people attended, and they heard such speakers as Garrett Smith, William Lloyd Garrison, Lucretia Mott, Frederick Douglass, and our own Samuel May. 